Hey everyone, welcome back to The Sterile Guy, your go-to channel for everything sterile processing. I'm Brandon, and today we're diving into a super important topic, which is instrument nomenclature. Knowing the names of surgical instruments isn't just about memorization, it's about understanding how they're named, categorized, and used. This knowledge will make you a more efficient sterile processing tech, help you assemble trays faster, and allow you to communicate better with the operating room team. So whether you're new to the field or preparing for certification, stick around. This is going to be an eye-opening breakdown. Let's get started. Each of these surgical instruments embodies a legacy of meticulous craftsmanship and innovative design, all aimed at enhancing patient outcomes. Today, you'll embark on a journey to join the ranks of professionals who understand the intricate stories behind these expertly forged tools. Surgical instruments are named using a combination of function, design, and even the name of the surgeon who developed them. Most names fall into three categories. First is descriptive names. These are based on shape or function. Number two is eponymous names, named after a person. And number three is combination, a mix of both. Let's break these down. Many instruments are based on their function or appearance, making it easier to understand their purpose. Let's talk about clamps and forceps, starting with hemostats. These are used to stop bleeding. If you think about the Latin phrasing, hemo equals blood and stat equals immediately. So together, these together is basically blood and immediately. We wanna immediately stop the flow of blood. Towel clamps. These secure surgical towels and or drapes in place. Now let's talk about scissors and cutting instruments. Bandage scissors, designed for cutting thick material such as bandages. Tenotomy scissors, delicate scissors allowing for precision dissection and cutting such as for tendons. Tenotomy, tendons. Now let's talk about retractors, which hold tissue back. Ribbon retractor. A ribbon is like a design with flexibility to mold into shape. Rake retractor, handheld and commonly used to hold back soft tissue, known for its rake-like appearance. These names describe what they do or how they look. The more you understand the logic behind the names, the easier it is to remember them. Moving into eponymous names. Some instruments are named after the very surgeons who invented or popularized them. While these names don't always explain function, they're commonly used in the OR, so you must know them. Here are some examples, starting with scissors. Mayo scissors. Mayo scissors are stronger scissors designed for cutting a variety of things like suture and more. They were named after the Mayo brothers, who were famous for their medical contributions. You may also know them as the founders of the Mayo Clinic. Adson forceps. Tweezer-like forceps made for precise tissue handling, developed and named by Dr. Alfred W. Adson. Coker clamps, often used in surgeries like ortho and GYN, named after Emil Theodore Coker. Their unique sharp teeth and serration design is ideal for grasping tough tissue. Balfour retractor, a self-retaining retractor commonly used in abdominal surgeries, named after Dr. Donald Church Balfour, who is a legendary general surgeon, also from the Mayo Clinic. The concept of the Balfour retractor was described by Dr. Balfour in 1912, and we still widely use it today, 100 plus years later. Surgeons will often request instruments by these names, so recognizing them will help you keep up in a fast-paced OR setting. And lastly, moving into combination names, which is a mix of eponymous and your general shape or function. Some instruments use both a descriptive name and an eponymous name, making them easier to decode. Some examples of these would be Olson Hagar needle holders. Olson being Dr. George Olson and Hagar being Dr. Douglas Hagar. And then needle holder, describing the purpose of the instrument to hold a needle. Yankauer suction. Yankauer from surgeon Dr. Sidney Yankauer. Suction, which describes the device's function. DeBakey forceps. DeBakey being a world renowned cardiothoracic surgeon named Dr. Michael DeBakey. And forceps, describing the instrument type. 
With the eponymous portions of the names, it isn't always easy to know the instrument off the top of your head. But once you break it down, you can almost guess what the instrument is used for when adding the function or design. Now let's take some of the most common procedures sterile processing techs deal with and break down the instruments by name. Within a laparoscopic cholecystectomy, which is a gallbladder removal, you'll find instruments like Maryland graspers. Because it is a grasper, we know it is used to hold and manipulate tissue. Can you guess where the name Maryland came from? If you started to say Dr. Marilyn, no. This one doesn't follow that naming convention of a surgeon. This forcep is actually named after the very company that designed it and popularized it, the Maryland Surgical Instrument Company. Bet you didn't know that. Trocar, a device for inserting laparoscopic instruments. Trocar is a word that comes from the French word trocart or trocar, which basically means three sides. If you've looked closely at the disposable trocars used in laparoscopic surgery, there's often a three-sided triangular shape to the tip of the trocar. Metz scissors, or Metzenbaum scissors, used for cutting fine tissue. A combination name instrument named after Dr. Myron Firth Metzenbaum, who was an American surgeon. Now let's move into a total knee arthroplasty, which is a knee replacement. In here, you'll find something like a Friedman rongeur, for precise cutting of bone and tissue. A combination name instrument named after Dr. Lewis Friedman, who was a neurosurgeon. Osteotome, a chisel-like instrument for shaping bone. Osteo refers to bone in medical terminology, and tome refers to cutting instrument, a section or segment of cutting. So an osteotome is used to cut sections or segments of bone. Wheat laner retractor. This is a self-retaining retractor often used to help expose the knee joint for better access. A combination name instrument named after Dr. Franz Wheat laner. Next, let's talk about a craniotomy, which is a brain surgery. In here, you'll find Penfield dissectors used for delicate tissue separation. These are a combination name instrument named after Dr. Wilder Penfield, an American Canadian surgeon. You may also find rainy clips used to control scalp bleeding. Here's another instrument that was named after two brothers, Rupert and Aidan Rainey, who developed them in order to meet the challenge of controlling scalp bleeding during cranial surgery. By understanding instrument names, you're not just memorizing, you're learning how to think like a surgical professional. All right, let's recap. Descriptive names. They tell you what the instrument does or how it is designed, such as hemostat or ribbon retractor. Next, we have eponymous names, named after a surgeon or a company. For example, Coker Clamp or Mayo Scissors. And lastly, we have combination names, which is a mix of both. For example, Mayo Hagar Needle Holder. Knowing these naming conventions makes you a stronger, more confident, and more valuable sterile processing technician. If you found this video helpful, smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the notifications so you don't miss a future upload. Do you wanna see more deep dives into instrument trays or specific procedures? Then drop your suggestions in the comments down below. I'd love to hear from you. I wanna thank you for watching, stay sharp, stay sterile, and as always, I will catch you in the next one.